Hey there, hunting family. Get ready for an episode packed with passion, camaraderie, and a whole lot of outdoor adventure. Today, we're thrilled to welcome a true trailblazer in the outdoor community, none other than Chris Bookman, founding member of the renowned 3B Outdoors Club. Since its inception in 2015, 3B Outdoors Club has been a beacon for outdoor enthusiasts, fostering a tight-knit community centered around family, friends, and the timeless traditions of the hunt. Chris embodies the spirit of 3B Outdoors with his unwavering dedication to connecting people, promoting outdoor education, and making memories that last a lifetime. So buckle up and prepare to be inspired as we delve into Chris's journey, the connection between 3B Outdoors and Menser Outdoors, and the exciting new initiatives on the horizon. Buckle up, let's get to it. All right, hey everybody! Uh, welcome back to Tracks and Tackle. We uh, we got a good one for you today. Uh, got the my riding partner here with me. How you doing today, Hollywood? We're riding, baby. We're riding. We are riding. It's been a long day of work, and uh, we're doing an evening interview here with a new new friend of ours, new friend of the uh, the show and uh, Tracks and Tackle, uh, uh, co founder of Three B Outdoors. So. Um, I want to bring that, bring our guest on here to tell you a little bit about the uh, 3B Outdoors and what they do. But um, essentially, uh, with his finger on the pulse of the outdoor world, uh, our guest Chris Bookman, he is not just a hunter, but uh, he's a bit of a master networker. And uh, he, he reached out to us and uh, we, we made a, a connection here. And, uh, you know, he's got passionate love for the outdoors. Uh, he's an advocate for conservation and uh, wanting to keep that old time uh, hunting club spirit alive. So I'm going to introduce Chris. Uh, we're going to bring him onto the show. Chris, how are you doing, man? I'm great, man. How are you guys? I am good. I'm good. Uh, really excited to hear about, uh, you know, 3B Outdoors. I want to I want to learn a little bit more about this, um, but we really want to get to know you. I appreciate you taking the time to, to come on and uh, shoot the crap with us today. Um, we're always trying to make new friends in the hunting community. And, uh, you know, when you had reached out to me originally, um, you know, just commenting on a post or, or something like that, that nature, yeah. you know, your, your, your message is very similar to ours. Right. And, uh, you know, it's uh, just want to embrace the outdoor lifestyle. And um, so why don't you just, uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are and uh and then we can get into what 3b outdoors is and okay and what you guys are your message yeah absolutely hey thanks for having me i've been looking forward to this uh you know it's a dull time of year you know so this time of year it's when you can talk hunting and fishing and kind of keep living it yeah uh, it's, <laughs> i've been looking forward to it so uh my name is chris uh i'm the co-founder of 3b outdoors club uh, grew up in Maryland. I now live in Pennsylvania. Across the border, became a Yankee uh, against my will, but I'm here now. So, uh, uh, you know, I was fortunate enough, and and I don't like to use the word blessed, but I was blessed enough to uh, grow up with a hunting family like you guys. Uh, my grandfather was a prominent farmer in Maryland, and we had uh, access to two really nice hunting properties, and we just grew up hunting and and, and fishing and. Uh, you know, brothers, if I told you how I grew up without any context of the house I lived in and the way me and my little brother grew up, you would think it was the 1950s. Uh, my dad actually built a log cabin for us, one of those kits, and we had electric and running water and TV. But we lived in the woods and all those memes that you see online about, oh, we played outside till the lightning bugs came out right. and we came in. That was us. That was me and my brother. You know, fishing for crayfish, uh, fishing. We had a stream in our front yard, uh, squirrels, birds, BB guns, uh, riding bikes all day. We knew to be home at five o'clock for dinner when mom uh, made dinner. And Going to keep go, mom happy, right? Yeah. And then we'd go back outside. So, uh, you know, I'm one of the, I, I'm, I'm, I, I do a lot of tech stuff and I do graphics and art and I do stuff on computers, but I'm also like that kid. I've never beat Mario Brothers because we were outside. 
you sure. know, like, uh, uh, we would just do, that was just us, you know, baseball, bikes, uh, fishing, you know, just it had a good life and you don't realize, uh, how good you have it until you look back at it. You know, we had it awesome. So. Yeah. I, I think you and I, we were talking and, and we're close to the same age. Mm-hmm. So like we, we grew up in a, during the same era and, uh, you know, we had the saying around home, you know, get outside and get the stink blown off of you yeah. a little bit, yeah. you know, get outside. But mom, yeah. mom, dad didn't want us hanging around the house all day. They want no. us to go out and play. No, and it's such a different time, man. And, and, you know, growing up in the eighties and nineties and stuff. I mean, we would play all day and we'd come home and there would just be a note from mom. Hey, I went to the store, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, I have some funny stories about that since you kind of grew up kind of religious, uh, kind of similar to what I did where, there was a couple of times where me and my brother thought the uh, um, the rapture had happened. Yeah, where's my <laughs> like, folks? Where's mom? You know, <laughs> we watched all those uh, all those videos growing up. But no, we we were lucky enough to have that, um, and it, it kind of uh, parlayed itself and rolled over as I got older, and uh, got into fishing as I got older. And we deer hunted um, growing up, and just like you guys on your podcast, I mean, the first day of rifle season in Maryland was. That was like Christmas Day. Oh yeah, we'd, we'd go out and and the farm that we my grandfather had the one farm was actually a working farm, uh, and he had a little Morton building aluminum mm-hmm. uh, office down there. We'd congregate there in the mornings. They'd have coffee, had a couch, had a shower. We'd go there, pack our lunches, get everything ready to go. I mean, I'm forty. I'm gonna be forty two this year, and my mom still packs me a lunch the first day of rifle season. Uh, she uses the leftovers from uh thanksgiving dinner and we all get our special ones uh you know i like dark meat a little bit better and i don't yep. like a ton of mayonnaise and i like the the little debbie english walnut brownies but my brother likes swiss cake rolls and we got our own little uh, your traditions yeah you know and it's funny because my dad rolls up uh, my dad in his 70s he rolls up in the truck and then my brother are, like congregating around him like like he's at like a a soup line for homeless people like where's our bags you know like uh stuff like that so you're uh, speaking our language chris yeah because, you, you know, know there's not much that's more important when you go out and and hollywood will tell me you know snacks matter snacks. They, you know so cream pies peanut butter crackers oh, that's man. normally my go-to man you ain't kidding dude and i have a really funny text from one of my nephews i'm not trying to jump around sorry but that's uh, good about two years ago we were out the first day of rifle season and uh, I hunt at the top of a very large hill and uh, I got up in the tree stand and I'm sitting there. It's not even daylight yet. And I get all settled in and I felt as I was walking up to my tree stand, I felt my phone go off and my nephew was at the bottom of the hill, far easier walk, not easy to get in there. He'd probably been there 20 minutes. And again, it's dark. And he goes, man, these sandwiches Nanny made are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, bro, we got to at least wait till the sun comes up, you know? Um, but yeah, we yeah. got some similar stories, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. I've been there. Some you... Day sits, you know, yeah. Yeah. You pack three sandwiches and it's like 10 o'clock and you're like, yeah. well, I should have packed another. Yeah. You know, but to, to, just to compound all that, you know, we just grew up with that, um, you know, hunting and fishing and, and we primarily deer hunted when I grew up. Uh, we Turkeys where I grew up in, in, in the part of Maryland, Northern Carroll County, Maryland's, um, if you ever heard of the middle of nowhere, well, I lived in the middle of everything uh, where I grew up and it's not too far from where you guys are from just on the Maryland side, but Gettysburg is a half hour away. Baltimore is 45 minutes away. DC is not far. Harrisburg's not far. Mm-hmm. You know, the middle of everything. Um, yeah. But where we lived was very uh, country. And at that time there wasn't turkeys in our area. So I get to this day, if I see a turkey, I'm like, Oh my God. It's a turkey and a what? You know, uh, but we didn't have that. So we just, I say all that because we just deer hunted and uh, a little bit of rabbit hunting and stuff like that. And I've branched off into some other stuff now, but uh, deer hunting was it growing up for us, man. That was, that was Holy Sabbath. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you know, that, that opening day is like, uh, it's not even the opening day. It's the lead up to the opening day, right, like that right. week leading up to like, yeah. uh, Thanksgiving time, we're eating turkey sandwiches, like you said. Yeah, yeah. You know, at our at our camp, uh, you know, we had a, a phrase that we say, you know, a, a good cameraman, a good cameraman brings snacks. Yeah. You know, yeah. so if you want a cameraman, like we started filming hunts and uh, 
uh, you know, just enjoying that piece of it. But you better bring some snacks if you're going to cameraman yeah. for me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got to contribute, oh, yeah. especially uh, there's not going to be much action. You can at least leave with a full belly. Yeah. You know, sit up there and probably unwrap the loudest rappers ever invented, you know, sitting up there trying to get a star crunch out of a wrapper yep. when it's 15 right. so, degrees outside, you know. So, hey, Chris, uh, and, and from what I've seen on your page, looks like you've gotten really big into migratory bird. Oh, man, that has taken my... Has your passion switch from deer and has, to bird more? Oh, yeah, that has... That's gotten me by the by the jibs, if you will. I hear it's so. an expensive hobby. It can be. And, and actually, <laughs> uh, as we get into this conversation, uh, I actually teach uh, uh, through 3B. I know I kind of didn't really talk about 3B too much, but through 3B, I met uh, some people that run... Uh, a group called YHEC. It's called Youth Hunting Education Challenge. It's actually sponsored by the NRA. Uh -huh. It's like a mix of Boy Scouts and Hunter Safety kind of put together where they teach these kids to teenagers all the way up until, I'm sorry, they're like preteens, 10 or 11, all the way up until maybe 16 or 17. And they do competition shooting, muzzleloader shooting, archery. Uh, they do like animal identification uh, from feathers to skulls to paw prints and stuff. Uh, but like what I was saying and maybe how you guys grew up, these kids didn't grow up doing any type of other hunting. So I met these people and they said, Hey, teach these kids about waterfowl hunting. And one of the things that we teach is how actually it's, I compared to golf, how it is expensive and there is things that you can spend a, a you know, gob stop of money on, but there's also, especially in Maryland, there's so many free options. There's free places to hunt. Um, you know, you don't have to buy a thousand decoys. You don't have to buy all the best calls. In fact, I rarely call at all. Um, mm -hmm. And if you've got a place that the, the, the birds are going, just like deer, if you've got a place that they're going for food or for shelter, they're going to go there. So you don't need all that stuff. So I say all that again to say, uh, I teach that to kids where, yeah, you can get the Sitka stuff and you can get all the expensive decoys and stuff. And it can be expensive. And some of that's worth it because you are hunting some colder, wetter uh, stuff, but you don't always need all that. So. That was a long well, answer to well, your question. Sorry. No, it's good. It's good. Uh, you know, a couple uh, when, when we first started the podcast, I don't know, you know, maybe a year ago, we're, we're approaching a year mm -hmm. on uh, our lifespan here. And um, I, uh, I was talking to you about, you know, how you can just like show up at a, a party uh, or a, a gathering and you don't know anybody there. Right. But it's like there's one other guy wearing a camo hat. Yeah. This guy you over know, here's got the the first light symbol or a Yeti hat on or something like yep. that. And, and yeah, you connect with them. And uh, so like I actually um, about a year ago, some friends of ours, young couple, they had uh, a birthday party for their one year old. It was their first birthday. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and we got a swimming pool at our place. It was summertime. And uh, so they asked if they could host the party at the pool and with a small, small group of friends. And uh, we, you know, we had no problems with that. So, I'm sitting there, you know, at the picnic, watching the kids swim and play and uh, talking with this other guy. And, you know, he's migratory bird, waterfowl. You know, he's from the West Coast, which is a, oh, okay. a different fly pattern. Oh, yeah. And uh, start talking to him. And he's got some uh, he's got some competition, uh, you know, championships, you know, state state champion uh, duck caller in, oh, okay. in the Northeast or Northwest. I said, man, you got you got to come on and and talk waterfowl yeah, cool. with us here a little bit. I'd love, so, to hear, love to hear that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you just, you meet people and, and we quarter sort of just bumped into each other randomly and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, wh why don't you just tell me a little bit about 3B, Okay. how you got started. Okay. And, um, you know, then uh, maybe we could segue into, you know, how we got connected with you guys. Yeah. I'm like a, I'm like a ship without a rudder sometimes. You got to steer me because I'll start telling stories. Okay. So, yeah, we, uh, we love it. I mean, storytelling <laughs> there's an art form. Okay. So 3B uh, started, uh, it was me and, and two other guys. And spoiler alert, it's not this deep meaning name. It was all our last name started with a B. Um, okay. uh, we started it. We all at the time worked in law enforcement. I still do. Um, so my two, two guys I worked with uh, started, just had the same thing as us. We just had a passion for hunting and fishing and just the outdoors and uh, just got together and I think it's still a big thing now, but especially in Maryland, I know there was a Facebook page when Facebook first took off called Maryland Bow Hunters. And it was basically, it's still a cool page, but it was like a bragging page of these yeah. monster bucks that were killed all over Maryland with bows. 
And, you know, that's when Facebook was kind of hitting its peak, 2010, 11 to 13, 14. Um, you know, it was kind of at its, its zenith there where it was kind of getting really big. So I was like, yeah, why don't we do something like this just with locally and we have enough friends that we can do it. Um, and we, we kind of, that was the, the first goal of it. And we were actually called like the old line hunting club or old line. Stay. I don't even remember. You can find the Facebook page with like the cheap Google fishing uh-huh. rod and rifle, like uh, stuff like that. And then uh, to backtrack a little bit, um, I was in a, a, a death metal band for a long time. And uh, I'm actually, if you think about it, I'm not really like, if you saw me, except for maybe a Yeti hat or, or some stuff, you're, I'm not the guy you're going to pick out at the party to talk to. Yeah, um, yeah, the, the uh, typical fully, uh, redneck. Uh, right, you know, like I'm, I'm like sleeved out, tattoos, my legs are covered in tattoos. Uh, uh, you know, I love all kinds of music, but... Uh, you play time, an was, instrument? Uh, are you a vocal I the, guy? I used or? to play the drums, but, you know, I did the vocals. And, you know, you can't really say I was singing, but, I mean, it was straight thrashing. Sure. Thrashing death metal. And we got kind of big, and, and I don't mean not to brag, because we just did it for fun, really, but... Uh, what we did was we had a production company at the time we were in the band and we had access to two uh, venues that we could book. One of them was a music store and one of them was an art club. And for that type of music, um, you know, whether you like it or not, that type of music, it's really, you're playing at bars, you're playing at places that are over 21. Uh Uh, So your friends and family and and little brother, little sister, whoever, even if you're a young band kid playing that music, you can't get access to these venues. So we said, we have access to these two. Let's start putting shows on. And then we'll use it to double dip. I will say, hey, I'm going to book you guys here with us uh, here at our venues. Why don't you get me a show in West Virginia? Why don't you get me a show in Harrisburg? Why don't you get me a show in D.C.? And we started this huge thing. It was called the CCEMC, Carroll County Extreme Music Corps. And we traded shows and we met, I mean, lifelong friends. Uh, you know, it's very similar to the hunting world. I mean, guys that are into that, it's like bikers or guys that play golf or hunting. I mean, that's their life, right? They're Common passion. It. Right. And I'm, and I'm you know, lifelong. I still talk to a lot of these people. Um, so fast forward a couple of years, um, I had to get a real job and cut my hair. Uh, you know, <laughs> but uh, uh, I started talking with a guy that I worked with. Um, not one of the guys I found it with it with. And I told you that now on the phone, I'm not going to say his name because I don't want to give him the satisfaction that he inspired me. Uh, yeah, that's um, right. <laughs> uh, but he said, Hey man, um, I would love a place where I could just catch some big farm, fat bass farm bass pond bass yeah and i said okay well i actually have that my grandfather has his farms and then a fish anytime you want buddy let's go fishing and he said yeah and just through the course of us talking he lived up in the hills of hagerstown maryland west kind of going towards western maryland we're kind of up in the mountains and he said man i got turkeys just all over my yard and they're just tearing my yard up he's like i wish somebody would come kill him and it was like a cartoon man i mean a light bulb goes off my head and i'm like okay okay I could do the same thing I did when we were in the band and with this production company. Why don't I start saying, hey, you come bass fish with me, I'll turkey hunt with you. Uh, I want to rabbit hunt. This guy's got acres out here. Let's go rabbit hunting. Let's do a deer drive. And that's how the, the whole freebie started. And then it kind of molded into like Tinder. I didn't really want to do that where it was kind of weirdos, you know, for lack of a better term. Yeah. Guys that were just, and I, I just kind of didn't want that. And and then we all were friends anyway. So then it just turned into like everybody that starts and I'm not knocking anybody, but then we're like, we're going to be the neck and bone collectors. Let's go make really cool videos, but that are funny and we can do this. And then that just wasn't my thing either. I just, you know, and you guys know this because you film, it's hard to do both. It's hard to, to focus on putting meat in your freezer or go out there and enjoy maybe your one day off, but then take pictures and then video and do all this stuff so that kind of that kind of went away and again i'm not knocking if people can do it great do your thing uh it just wasn't for me and i and even in the band and stuff like that um i never wanted it to be a business even though we got kind of popular at the time uh i would get in trouble because i would give our stickers away i would give our t-shirts away because everyone that you gave a t-shirt to or a sticker to they would come to the next show yeah they would come to the party they would come do that and I said, let's just do that, guys. I don't want to. I don't want to sell stuff. I don't want to make it a business. Let's just let's just make stickers. You know, people want T-shirts. We'll make them for ourselves and anybody that wants them. Let's just make a club, and that's kind of where we're at now. It's not kind of. That is where we're at now. Uh, uh, 
I just want it to be a club. I, I'm fascinated with, and you guys are lucky enough. And I love listening to your stories about your hunt club. You know, yeah. I, well, I didn't grow up with that, and, and we kind of did, but we didn't got to go away. I love I love reading and looking at the pictures of these guys that go up to Michigan, and and uh, you know the Midwest where they go to these hunt camps, and and the old pictures of the guys in the in the Sears red flannel and and the wool rich colors and stuff like that. So I said, why don't we fast forward it? Why don't we make it like that? Why don't we have this group of guys that's just uh, and girls that are just super tight? Let's hang out. Let's have fun. Let's bring back. Let's bring back traditions. Um, and it's funny because it is on social media, but it's like put the phone down and yeah. let's go outside. Get you outdoors. Know, as, yeah, as I'm typing that on my phone, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But and then selfishly, it's funny to me too that I made a logo sitting on my toilet. Uh, on an app on my phone that people put on their trucks. <laughs> well, you know, some of the best uh, the best uh, inventions happen. You know, that's your, yeah. that's a time where we get to think yeah. uninterrupted. Yeah, yeah. You know, I got a couple cool. Uh, I went to school for art and design and uh, and art history and stuff like that. So uh, a little Photoshop that back in the day that was a thing. But there's so many apps on your phone you can use. And uh, I just made. Well, I didn't know that, Chris, because I mean, yesterday I think I texted you uh, some cover art for the, yeah. for this upcoming episode, and I'm like, yeah. I'm like, here, you know, I'm just trying my hand at it. I, I didn't go to no, school that, for any that, of that. That uh, turned out really cool. And, and here's the thing: you don't have to anymore. There's so much stuff that's just, again, in the palm of your hand. I mean, yeah, they make 15, a tool for it. Yeah, yeah 15, 20 it. years ago, it was, a, it was a tower desktop computer, right? You know, but uh, now it's cool, man. And, and, and the, the Facebook thing never really took off for us. It still has. I might have 400 followers on there, but Instagram took off for me. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm gonna, I'll rant about that for a minute. But like when I first started, we kind of grew and grew and grew and then started going out. And then I hit this thing where I was getting a couple hundred likes every post. And then I had my second, I'm sorry, my newest son a couple years ago. He's going to be three. And I stopped posting for a while. And I don't know if I fell out of the algorithm I don't know if they just don't like hunting as much anymore. I, I just don't get the, the likes as I, I used to get anymore on it. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Instagram's our main thing that we use. I like to use it more than Facebook. I just like Instagram. I like pictures. Uh, I like it's relatively on my end, at least drama free. But yeah. I've, connected, I've connected with people more over that. So we have uh, pro staff. You know, I don't pay them or anything like that. But same part of the club, staff. though. I mean, that's well, that's it. You get to associate. That's your... Right. And, and here's the thing, if it could help you, like there's a guy in Canada that's part of our pro staff and he actually wants to be a professional hunter. Uh, okay. So it's like, it's like when you go to get a credit card and you have to have credit to get credit. Well, now I have him on my pro staff. I have a legitimate page. I have a legitimate following. He can put that down uh, that he does this and represents me and has some, some stuff to represent and then he can move forward and go from there. So, but again, that's just cool to me that he's got stickers on his, He's got a, 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 a huge elk mounted in his house and there's a 3B sticker on, the, on it. And I'm like, dude, I made that on, yeah. my, on my pooper. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. You know, but, uh, you know, I'm about, if you guys couldn't tell, I'm about having a good time and laughing Great. and telling stories. And uh, Well, that's it. I mean, and I think, uh, you know, you, you, you had, um, you know, you connected with me, you know, right. through social media. Yeah. And then we find out, you know, we only live so far away from one another right. you're pretty close to where i grew up and i'm like all right man we got a, we got a local guy here that uh has a similar passion and uh you know we started trading stories and uh you know so we've been really excited to have you come on and, and talk about the you know sort of the heart behind what you guys are doing with 3b outdoors very similar to to what we're doing um because we're not selling anything we're just having a good time we're making memories and uh you know we we're we're on Instagram, mm -hmm. we're on uh, YouTube, and mm -hmm. we're almost trying to, not trying, but we're, we're watching to see, uh, you know, one video will hit one place right. and, and take off, and then another video will hit the other place, and it'll take off, and I don't know the rhyme or reason to it, I, and I'm not I'm trying right. to figure it out. I'm we're just having way. a good time, and it's uh -huh. an excuse for us to get together and hang out, yeah, That's so yeah. that's that's the big thing because we're making memories. Right. I can't figure out either. I posted a video of uh, my son, like slow-mo casting a fishing rod with some algae on. I put some, some metal music to it and I got like 8,000 views. And yeah. I got, that's like, the simplest awesome, thing. 
and I got these awesome videos that I think is awesome of like uh, the the duck dog bringing this duck back through the fog, and I mean it's like this epic thing, and I might get like two hundred. Or I made my uh, brother in law is a welder, and he made us like this treble hook too. We hunt on this one stream river where we can throw it and get our decoys back. I just did a slow motion video and I put some hate breed music behind it. And I got like 10,000 views on it. I'm like, what? Like, that's just my front yard. Just me being a, a giant kid, you know? Uh, yeah. I can't, I can't figure it out though. But uh, hey man, if you ain't having a good time, you're doing something wrong, right? So. Yep. It's just about sharing the memories and, you know, just yeah. trying to capture it. It's, it's a balance too, like you said, because we try to get off our phones and we try to absorb it. But yeah. also we're trying to step up, you know, sharing and just trying to inspire others to say like, hey, this is a blast and, you yeah. know, come out, take a step into the woods and, and see about the passion that we have to offer. Oh, man, there's and there's nothing. I've done some cool stuff and seen some cool things, man, but there's nothing like watching the sun come up on a cold morning, you know, in the woods, as sappy and hallmarky as that sounds, you know, or, or the warmth. And you can't describe it, the spiritual warmth that you get when that sun hits you and it's cold outside. Yep. Oh, yeah. And, and, you Pictures know, and videos don't do justice either. You can't, you know. And Right. Uh, it's just, it's just, there's nothing, there's nothing that beats it, you know. And that's what we're about, man. Taking pictures, uh, sharing traditions. I love, again, I love old school stuff. Uh, so we just, that's what we're about, man. Uh, my grandfather in the in the farm I told you guys about, he had a, 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 like one of those plywood, like press wood doors. You could probably put your finger through it if you pushed hard enough. But he had all from floor to ceiling was Polaroids of us with deer and him with deer. And uh, yeah, that's just cool, man. You know, my wife yeah. actually for Christmas got me a Polaroid camera and I've been taking pictures and stuff with it. And, well, I mean, that's, that's, you know, sort of, you know, what connected me to your story when we started talking was, you know, trying to keep that, that old school feeling alive, yeah. even in this, this day and age where everything is social media and, you know, digitized right. and things like that. I know whenever um, we started, you know, whenever I was, you know, 12 years old uh, to 14 years old going out and, you know, getting some of my first uh, harvests, um, you know, my, my older brother, he was the one that would try to document it, you know, and, and back then we didn't always document uh, mm -hmm. our harvests uh, as far as a photograph goes, but we tried to, you right. know, even if it was after the fact when we got it back home, right. you know, it's on the tailgate, you know, we're trying to take a picture because he was trying to uh, document and capture that, right. you know, and now here we are fast forward, you know, 30 years later and I'm recording everybody on the phone, you know, I'm out yeah. in the woods, but I'm taking pictures and I'm yeah. catching video and, you know, I'll edit it down and, and do something with it or whatever, but it, we're just documenting our hunt a different way. Um, yeah. And, uh, but the, but the main point is always still the main point. Like we, we want to enjoy being outdoors. Um, probably my, one of my favorite times of day is like you said, that, that morning time where you're hearing the, the forest come alive. Oh, it's, yeah. And then evening when it, when it's, you know, the birds are beginning to roost and, and settle down. I think I like morning a little bit better than evening, but um, mm -hmm. often, you know, when you, when you hunt deer, it's a little bit warmer in the evening than it is yeah. first yeah. thing in the, you know, in you're the morning, depending you're on where you're at location wise, things of that yeah. nature. You're not freezing yet. And it's funny because I'm all about that. I have uh, the extra storage for my phone. I have like 12,000 pictures on my phone because I have kids, but hunting yeah. pictures and, and my brother, who's a hardcore hunter is the opposite. I got to be like, chick, did you get anything? Did you take any pictures? And he'll be yeah. like, hold on. And he'll go put his coat back on or something like that. And he'll go outside. <laughs> Let me stage a photo up here. Yeah. And it's actually funny because he, uh, uh, not this past hunting season, but the season before he killed a just hammer buck. Uh, and Maryland has an early muzzleloader season. I'm not sure if Pennsylvania does uh, in October uh, when mm -hmm. the rut's really going on in Maryland and he killed, I mean, it looks like something from a, a magazine, just this deer. And the picture he sends me, he's in like a, a dirty wife beater and like yep. messed up <laughs> shorts. And I'm like, this is the picture. Like I would take a picture to hang on the walls or like so my kids could have one day. I'm like, this is, this is the one you chose, bro. You know, Book of a lifetime. Right, 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 right. You know, but uh, 
Yeah, man. I don't know. I meant to ask you guys this. Uh, growing up in Pennsylvania, because I didn't, I didn't grow up here, and I don't really deer hunt up here now. When you were kids, did they have check stations up here where you had to take the deer when you killed it, or was it all through the phone or mail and stuff? Yeah, no, it, it, it wasn't growing up. I mean, we didn't really have to check deer until, um, till like CWD became a thing, yeah. okay. you know, and then they started to like break off certain sections of the state where okay. you, they, you can't transport the deer from, uh, you know, anything with the spine or the head, you know, okay. from one part of the state or across state lines. And they've, that's become, you know, a thing, yeah. um, you know, in, in the past, in the recent years, but like, you know, growing up, it's, it was mailing your tag, calling your tag. Okay. And um, that's that's certainly how we handled things. Yeah, growing up for us, it was really cool because they had check stations. So you'd have to you know, get your deer. And <clears throat> what most people would do is they would check it in on the way home. But my mm -hmm. dad would always come home and get us first if we didn't go with him as little kids. And you're piling in the truck. And he had one of the you know late 80s, early 90s box F-254 trucks. You know, everybody wishes they had now. And, yeah. Uh, we'd drive around and show people. And I mean, my dad killed deer all the time and it wasn't like it was a rare thing, but we would drive to my grandmother's house and we'd go to my other grandma's house and this guy's house and you go to the check station. There's your cousins or there's this guy who got the biggest buck or, you know, dad was sure he got the biggest one. And my brother Josh thought he got the biggest one, but sure enough, there's going to be a way bigger one there. And there's always going to be a way smaller one there. So that mm -hmm. was something really cool. And Maryland did away with that, but it was always this really cool uh, thing that as a kid, I guess maybe um, subtly inspired me to, to, to bring, the club kind of thing back is people be there drinking coffee i don't want to say tailgating it's the it's proverbial kind of, water cooler you know where but, everybody's yeah, swapping stories and yeah you know and the one place that was down there where i grew up was actually a taxidermist too so you could also go in there and not only were people checking deer and they were weighing deer as deer hanging up on the scales but you could see the mounts you could see different things and it was all it was just cool it was just this really cool and if you were a little kid these guys would shake your hand if you killed a deer They'd see the blood on your face. It was just oh. this cool, you know, I'm, I'm one of the guys now. You know, yeah. I don't even know this guy. And he's yeah, fist bumping me or shaking my hand, you know, hurting my hand. He shook my hand so hard to hurt, you know, and, uh, and stuff like that. But you, 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 were, uh, you were the cool guy then, you know, so. Yeah, it's like a mutual respect of, of, of amongst outdoorsmen. Yeah. And, so, uh, you know, it, we, we celebrate one another's successes. Right. I mean, they. We still have that, you know, like I said, with, uh, with CWD, things are different up here. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, the, the check stations were really big, like with, with bear, like in bear season, yeah, you, you got to yeah. check your bear. And, um, you know, depending on what day, what day of the week and, and how many people were, were around, you know, you might go in there and there might be a, a bunch of guys and you might go show up and you know, not so many guys, right, but, right, uh, right, right. you know, the, the amount of hunters today versus, you know, back, back 20, 30 years ago, even as, as right. decreased, it seems. Well, and then, and, and then honestly to, to roll into the, to the next thing, while I'm into this waterfowling so much is where I live and, and outside of my brothers and our family, they're not nice. People that deer hunt aren't nice anymore. I mean, mm -hmm. it might be at the, at the club setting or, you know, the, the guy at the party, like you're saying, but nobody wants to, 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 uh, share their buck or tell you the story where they got it you know properties at a prime i get that yep um hunting spaces or, or prime uh locations nobody wants to do that um so they don't it, it's like this weird area and everyone's judgy and i think i talked to you a little bit last night about on the phone just real quickly but like you know certain people now are into the aging and scoring deer and if you're about that again that's your thing do it bro that ain't me that ain't me you know i'm shooting the first thing i see usually unless it has spots and i if i don't have a lot of meat in the freezer uh you know i'm shooting that one too sometimes you know just kidding but crock seriously. pot deer right <laughs> yeah you know uh they're so tender you can't help it yeah. you know but uh you know no i will if i see a group of deer i'm going to shoot the biggest one i see and if i know there's a big buck on the property that's going to be our target buck um you know stuff like that but we eat them you know i have five kids uh you know, my wife and kids all love it. yeah my son just turned 14 he loves to cook he's going to go to culinary school and he made a venison roast tonight for us you know and spaghetti and tacos and all that stuff so we eat them and stuff like that so again i'm not judging anybody i've never judged anybody uh, that sure. wants to do that but i say all that uh, to say there's so much of that and judgmental stuff going around 
that people don't want to share. They don't want to talk about their deer anymore, uh, either for fear of that or uh, they've grown this deer. And this is just my opinion. They've grown this deer so much. It's basically a cow that they had on the farm. Uh They came to this feeder. They've named it. They've been watching this deer for uh, four or five years. You know, I don't want to say it's tame because it's not. But, you know, to me, that's not my thing. If you want to do it, all tides make all the boats rise. You know, do your thing. But what drew me to waterfowl hunting was the opposite. Of that was the camaraderie, the people that were like, "Come on with us. We're killing ducks over here. Come out with us." And uh, just the brotherhood of that. And I don't know if you can tell from me talking right now, you don't have to be quiet. You can yeah. sit there and laugh with your brothers or laugh with your boys, and uh, and you see the ducks and you get quiet and you don't move. You know, but you're eating well, that- snacks. You know. I mean, that's just like it. I mean, I was talking to a friend earlier today and we were talking about turkeys and, you know, turkey hunting versus deer hunting in, in the yeah. fall. And, uh, you know, like with, with a deer, you don't know if there's another deer in the next haul over. But when you hear that gobble, I yeah. mean, you can get excited, you know, and birds will do that. Birds are, you know, you, you get that audio, you can sit and then the blind and you can, you know, shoot the breeze and have a good time. But, you know, when, when you, hear activity or you see them i mean you go stop you get still and it's it's time to play yeah right yeah and 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 it's just kind of going back to to uh some stuff earlier you know duck hunting is you know it's easy to take a kid fishing because you can go to walmart and get fishing stuff and you can go to any local pond and go and duck hunting is a similar thing to me because it's so easy to sit in a blind with a kid that maybe can't sit still but once they get outside and you say, hey, look up, here's the ducks. I mean, they're into it then, you know, and it, you can take your kids, you can take your young kids, sit in the blind, and we'll take little buddy propane heaters with us, you know, we'll take uh, stuff like that to keep warm and stuff like that. And, and I have three sons, uh, two that are, are teenagers, and they're just into it, man. They, they're just into it. And it's just the social aspect of that and being able to laugh and have a good time and, and, that's what you almost look forward to more than, than killing the duck is just laughing and, right. and, and cutting up, you know? So I think it's awesome. You see these videos of people that have their decked out uh, bunkers and they're making breakfast oh, sandwiches yeah, for everybody. And like you said, yeah. they're all talking, but, but Chris, you, you touched on it a little bit here of tradition and how it impacted you, you know, growing up as a you know young adult, but what are you doing for your kids to, to pass that down and, and, and instill a uh, passion and maybe even, future traditions down the road so we go every year um me and a couple buddies uh you know friends probably maybe like you guys have that are not blood relatives my, my brother does go with me my little brother uh, but i have two guys that uh, i one that i work with and one of the co-founders that i started three b with we go into assateague maryland eastern shore and we do a duck hunt every november and again just bringing that kind of feel back of there's so much tradition down there uh, of just that Maryland's Eastern shore and the ocean and stuff hunting and stuff like that, but going in there every year and hanging out and we all pile in one truck, you know, we're just laughing and cutting up. So building that thing that our kids and then my friends that have kids can, can, can build upon and keep going with is all about, I keep a log book of what I hunt and I got my son's log books uh, for when they go. And, uh, you know, my oldest boy is 14 and he killed his first first buck this year and his first duck and his first goose this year. And he is just full on hooked into it. Oh, wow. It's all it takes. Uh, full action. Yeah. I mean, he's just into it, but he's also like, I think he likes going to a Wawa or Popeye's or Chick-fil-A and getting milkshakes at night. Cause you know, uh, it's just the guys. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And we're just, uh, we're just doing that. And again, he's, you know a kid but he's he's accepted in the tribe yeah i don't know how it is for like young girls i'm I'm sure it's the same you know we're guys so like we we haven't experienced that but you know it is like when when you're coming of age you know and you get accepted into the tribe yeah um you know it's it's a really big deal to be included and, and yeah. even if you don't have a whole lot to say in those conversations as the old timers are are talking around the table or the tailgate yeah. You know, you're you're still your part of it, and you're feeling included. Yeah, yeah. And you learn a lot thing. just from listening and just being in the room. Well, it's funny because again, we all ride in the same truck, and 
the, not this past year, but the year before we, we were coming back from down there. And that's always the worst part, whether you're going to the beach or whether the going the drive just feels like it takes forever, you know, and I'm like a little kid in the car. Okay. I'm six, four, I'm three hundo, but I'm like a child. You put me in the car and I'm not driving. I'm <laughs> yeah. Well, that passes little... the time too. Yeah. So me and my little brother are in the back of this car and we're just out. I mean, head swinging out. And my son was up front with uh, my best friends who, uh, and they're just talking like their father and son are best friends. And, and just that means the world to me, but it also means the world to my son that I'm sure. sitting in the front front truck, uh, front seat of the truck with this guy. And we're talking and laughing. I'm one of the guys and they, they're throwing stuff at us as we're sleeping and, <laughs> and uh, stuff like that. But now traditions, you know, that's a big tradition for us. Um, again, I, the, the first day of rifle season is a big deal with us where we go out and, uh, my one son does not, my, my second oldest son, he's 12, he's going to be 13, he does not like the cold. So a lot of times I'll go out in the morning for the first day yeah, and I'll come back and, and get him and uh, and stuff like that. But just stuff like that, fishing, uh, just going out hiking. Um, I live near Cadora State Park in, in, in Pennsylvania, Long Arm. you got a lot of good hiking and, and boating if you're, if you got that sort of thing, uh, you know, Cadors yeah. is a, it's an awesome yeah. park. Hey, listen, man. Well, I don't know if you guys know this, you can duck hunt there. And we have killed, I mean, the gamut of ducks out there. And it's literally one of the launches is seven minutes from my house. Sweet. And, uh, you know, we've gone there and done stuff. And they there's an issue with that where they, they drained a lot of water from that this year and people weren't real happy with it. So I didn't hunt this year, but really just getting out and doing it, um, it's a tradition, just taking time with my kids since they were little, little, just taking time and taking pictures. And at the end of the year, we print, I print pictures out and we put photo albums together and, uh, you know, have, have just make it fun, you know, getting snacks, going to sheets or, or Turkey Hill and, uh, getting our stuff. I don't know if you can hear my one kid running through the hallway now, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's a tradition. Just again, just let's go get some chocolate milks and, and I don't care, you know, uh, mom's not here so we're going to go to turkey hill at 5 30 in the morning and you can have whatever you want uh, yeah, my oldest yeah. son is my oldest son's very sensible he might get a dr pepper but he's going to get okay i want this and i want this and maybe some beef jerky and my other son's like okay i want the biggest hershey bar you have i want all the donuts and i want some sour patch kids <laughs> yeah and, the uh, rules are different when mom's not around yeah, without a doubt you know? <laughs> yeah so you know, that's the biggest thing for me is just getting them out there and sharing that, uh, just making memories. And uh, well, that's what we're all about, you know, is, yeah. is capturing the memories. You know, yeah. uh, we just did uh, we just did a show with uh, <clears throat> my my one cousin who I grew up with. And uh, we just started telling stories. And, yeah. you know, Hollywood's heard these stories for years. Oh, but he's yeah. I haven't heard either, too. I learned yeah. learned some more. Yeah, you you got got some of the details that uh, you know we we conveniently leave out when we're telling these uh, legendary tales, you yeah, know, because yeah. we 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 you know I tell my side and he tells his side. So, but it's yeah. it's cool to uh, you know reminisce and, and relieve relive those uh, memories. But um, you know, I, I don't know. I got an appreciation for that. So, like when we met, um, you had reached out, and I thought, man, this this guy's uh, they're on to something that's very similar to what you know, what we want to do. And it's really just, it's, it's inspire and, and spread the message that. of getting outdoors, you know? Yeah. So, um, you know, that's, that's the piece. And I feel like you were sharing with your band and stuff. You talked about, you know, networking different guys together. You've already like told, you, you know, Chris sent me texts. He's like, Hey, check this guy out on Instagram. He's a really good dude. You know, um, you're all about connecting people, right. you know, being a bridge builder. And, um, you know, that's, that's an art form in itself as well, you know, because there are a lot of guys out there that just, they don't, you know, they just keep to themselves. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, that means a lot that you say that. I appreciate that. And, and if I can have, whether it's music or whether it's pizza or whether it's deer or duck hunting, you guys have all had these experience. Why wouldn't you want to share that with somebody? Why wouldn't you tell somebody, Hey bro, that's the best pizza in Pennsylvania right there. Right. That's the best cheesesteak you're going to have. To me, it's the same mindset. You know, hey, I have a blast, no pun intended, wasting geese. 
we're going to eat some donuts and we're going to laugh and we're going to shoot them. Dude, you should come with us. You yeah. Know, like, it's fun. And then if I can hook you up with this guy who did this, you know, I told you about Mike from Mountain and Marsh, great friend. Uh, right. Martin, I sent you the taxidermy guy who's also, he's my boss, he's my supervisor, with, but he also is like our taxidermist and like kind of duck hunt guy that got us into it. You know, just good guys. And, and, and that's what's inspired me to do all this, you know, to backtrack a little bit when you said like, you know, what got me into the club and the traditions and stuff, you know, we were rabbit hunting one day uh, with that friend, his name's Garrett Martin, and uh, the taxidermy thing I was just talking about. And we were rabbit hunting and just having a good time. And, and uh, I said, hey, buddy, we're going to do a pheasant hunt at one of those game farms. Would you want to go? And he said, yeah, how much does that cost? And I said, well, it's about $200 a gun, but it's a lot of fun, pretty good success rate. And he said, bro, you own property. I mm-hmm. raise pheasants. I got a dog. Let's do it here. You give me 200 bucks. I'll bring them out for your whole group. So we started doing that. And we have an annual pheasant hunt that we do every year. But just that openness that, hey, I, let, let's do it. Let's bring it out. Come duck hunt with me. Come rabbit hunt with me. Let's just do it. That openness to, to, to share. And that's kind of what I was getting at about where deer hunting has turned, where it's almost like a closed door. We have like a, a secret uh, society speakeasy. You yeah. Know, yeah. I, I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm pretty tight lipped on, you know, where my deer stand right. is and, you know, that sort of and stuff that, too, you fair. know, that's fair, you know, and uh, uh, stuff like that. But that's what was so, that's what that's such inspired me because I wouldn't have gotten into this stuff. And I remember literally shooting the first duck that, that I shot the right way. Cause it's kids who always took pot shots at them on ponds and, yep. you know, flying over maybe rabbit hunting and stuff, but like legitimately duck hunting. I remember the first duck I shot and, and it was, it just it lit a thing in me and I said, Man, this is what my life needs. It's not what my wife thinks my life needs or like what my wallet needs, you know. But uh, my wife is awesome. She she's all about it from taking kids out and and uh letting me fill my whole basement up with ducks that <laughs> Well that's I mean, I've I've done a little bit of uh I think I shared with you a little bit of waterfowl hunting. Yeah. Um, but we didn't grow up doing that. You know, so, you know, I, yeah. I've gone on some business trips and been invited to, you know, some really, really good duck hunting spots. Yeah. And uh, but growing up as, as a hunter, you know, it was like sh- shooting fish in a barrel, as they say. You know, I mean, there was just yeah. so many coming through yeah. the fly pattern. But, Especially you know, where you said you went down there. I mean, that's like the Disney World. Yeah, I mean, you're oh, you're oh, right oh, time oh, of year, so you know. right fly pattern, and you're watching oh. these guys, you know, world class callers, watching yeah. the dogs work. Yeah. Um, you know, when when those birds begin to cup their wings and come in to land, um, it, it's 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 a different excitement yeah. or a different thrill, yeah. you know. But uh, I just I, we never got into it around here, you know. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna get I'm, you guys into it. Yeah, I mean, I'm interested because all you need sometimes is that that buddy to say, right. "Hey, come on, you know, yeah, let's go yeah. pheasant hunting, uh, or you know, we're good. we're gonna go trout fishing, or whatever the the thing right. is." Uh, right. If you got somebody to do it with, then you can make a memory. Right. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Lee, that that founded Three B with me, that's what he did. Let's go to goose hunting, and uh, let's do it down here. And then we, why we go to Assa Creek is he grew up down there, his family's down there, so. We started doing that, and that's all it takes. So if I can do that, if I can be that bridge to bring you in and share something that I love so much, uh, that I can do it. And and this is where I'm going to sign my dad, the preacher, right now. Okay. So if, if there's one thing I want you guys or your listeners to get out of this whole thing, it's this right here. And I think you, uh, Mr. Hollywood Horse, said that said this term earlier, uh, passion. If you yeah. can share your passion with somebody. You can change their whole life. And I'm going to tell you a story right now. Uh, about 15 years ago, uh, my wife is the oldest in her family. Her brother is 14, 15 years younger than her. So he was a kid. You know, probably same age as my boys now. We're riding around in the car. And I love music. I love classical music. I love metal. I love old country music. I just love music. And I had a soundtrack to a movie on. Uh, Pirates, of the, Pirates of the Caribbean, probably which is the best soundtrack to any movie ever made. Um, the second or third one, if I look it up, change your life. Uh, but we were listening to it in the car. And me sharing that with him 
inspired him to go to school and he does that now as his job. He's a, he does film scores and he's done stuff that's on Netflix. He's done wow. stuff that's on Amazon, uh, Tubi. And that's not a plug for him, but I'm just sure. saying something so little as, hey, just check this out. You can share your passion with somebody. You don't know where it could lead uh, just down the road. It could, and it could save somebody's life. I mean, there, there's people that have uh, duck hunting and turkey hunting and, and, and fishing has that saved their lives. One of the, the links I sent you was a guy that owns a fishing company in Maryland. They do snakehead fishing. And what he does is his friends, and he doesn't do this as his job. He actually sells and manufactures his lures. But his group of friends, they help guys that are from Baltimore City recovering from drugs and alcohol. And they use fishing as that tool to replace that addiction. Yeah. Yeah. There's you know. a lot of worse addictions out there than, you know, yeah. wanting to spend right. more time outside. You know, I don't know how much of them are cheaper than drugs, but like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, stuff like that. But if, like I said, if you guys did anything on like that, it's just it's share share that passion and sh- sh- extend the hand. Come out with us. Uh, let's have a good time, you know. And then you might get something in return. I mean, I don't mean that selfishly, but you might get a guy that says, hey, come fishing with us. Come, yeah. I come shoot a turkey with it, you know, and stuff like that. So that's what I'm all about. You know, I don't want to make money. I just want to hang out and, and meet guys like you, uh, you know. I'll let you know. I'll let you inside the vest here a little bit that Chris is, you know, we get to know each other and we talk a little bit, you know, but you're saying you have a, you know, a love for all kinds of music and all kinds of, uh, you know, just different genres and things like that. But, um, you know, back in the day before cell phones, you know, we, we did mix in uh, walkie talkies when we did, you know, driving and, and we were hunting and things and we need to communicate, you know, certainly when you're really, really out, um, you know, out, out in the deep, the deep timber. But yeah. now we have, now we have cell phones and, you know, I spend a lot of my time when I'm in the tree stand, uh, you know, texting with my hunting buddy here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're always throwing songs back and forth to one another, you know, because yeah. you're sitting in the tree stand and you get a tune stuck in your head. Oh, man. You got to pre so, plan sometimes when you're driving because you don't want to get the worst thing stuck in your head as you're sitting there all day, you know? Well, what we'll, what we'll do is, uh, you know, sometimes what I'll do is I'll send, I'll send a text and, um, you know, I got the tune in my head, but I'm changing the words to that song. Yeah, and, yeah, and I'm sending it over and uh, seeing if my hunting partner can uh, name that tune. You know, and he does the same. Okay. You know, so yeah. we've got a pretty good thread, uh, a text thread of a, of a different song. But I mean, it's an appreciation, and uh, it helps pass the time too. So yeah. I'll whisper sometimes as we're walking to our tree stands, like the last minute that you can talk, I'll lean over and whisper to my brother, like, "It's the final countdown." <laughs> I'll get something like that stuck in his head all day. You know? uh-huh. still texting, I can't put this in my head all day, you know. Uh, stuff like um, that, but yeah, so, I mean, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, so I was just going to touch into, uh, you know, you talked about passion and, you know, sharing that with others and, and giving to others. And um, Ron put me on here and, and shared with me about the, the game dinner that 4B yeah. is going to host. And I just think that uh, attests to, you know, what you guys represent and what you represent as, yeah. uh, you know, the, the human that you are. But if you just want to talk to our listeners about that a little bit and just share some details yeah. and promote it. Yeah, so this is our second one. It's going to be Sunday, April 14th at 530. Uh, again, my dad's a preacher. He has a, a small church in Hanover, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's the second one we're doing. We did one last year. It was really good. About 75, 80 people came out to it. Totally free. Uh, lots of uh, game and, and, and typical stuff you'd expect from that. Uh, some not so typical stuff like that. I think we had some roast beaver there last year, which is nice. exquisite. I'm not even being funny. If, I, if you ever nah, there's not much. Me. I mean, the beaver tail, man. Yeah, you know, it was good. But we also make hot dogs and and stuff like that. So again, Sunday, April 14th, uh, 5:30, we're doing our, our, our second one. Uh, again, it's free. Come on out. Uh, we're doing this one like kind of cookout style. It's going to be indoors. Uh, but just, you know, burgers, dogs, sloppy joes, all kinds of salads and stuff like that, all kinds of desserts. And uh, come on out, man, meet some people, hang out. And uh, we do a bunch of giveaways and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of people do game dinners this time of year, and a lot of churches do that, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, ours is really no different than anybody else's except uh, 
I'm probably the coolest guy in the world. So. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, the, the purpose really is is to gather gather those like minded, yeah. uh, you know, oh, it's, yeah. give us a reason to hang out. Yeah, we had that a guy last year. I had a guy last year that came that uh, brought a whole bushel of oysters. I didn't ask him to do that. He just paid for them, bought them, and he's shucking oysters for people, you know. So cool. And he's just hanging out, man, and and and, and he's just looking around the room, and everyone's laughing and having a good time. The kids are playing, and and the wives are talking, and 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 it was just this cool atmosphere it was just it, it was just cool you know and i'm usually not a selfish look at me thing but i looked at my guy lou and i looked at my brother and I'm like, oh, we did it. this is cool man like uh you know so we're gonna do it again and i just got the green light uh, from my dad and his church uh to do like quarterly breakfast uh like hunt club style breakfast um so we'll talk about that when we have the, the dinner and stuff like that but uh coming out just have bring your kids and, and and let's just hang out let's just trade stories and meet people and hang out and have just have fun you know well i think that's a that's a great opportunity for us i mean <clears throat> you know just getting to know one another have a couple phone conversations and, and yeah. texting back and forth with one another but uh you know we want to we want to mark our calendars and, and come down and support the effort um yeah. certainly because it's it sounds like a great time and we're always looking for something to do on the weekend yeah, you know, yeah. to, to get out and, uh, and connect with other, other people like this, because uh, whether you, whether you realize it or not, because I think you were talking about, you know, the passion and changing, you can change your life. Oftentimes you do not realize the impact you're making on the people around you, exactly. you know, yeah. you nine know. times out of 10, they never come back and tell you, you know, yeah. but once in a while you get somebody to come back and say, you know, Hey, you said this that one time and, you know, it shifted things for me or whatever, but we don't realize the impact that we're making on those people around us. Right. And, um, you know, so I, I'm really, I'm looking forward to, you know, connecting with you guys more and, uh, and growing in relationship with, with, you know, your message rings true, <laughs> get outdoors. You know, we, we, we like to say nature is our playground yeah. and, uh, yeah. you know, it's the heart of, we got this beautiful country that we live in. We've got all these resources, uh, you know, at our fingertips and, and you take it for granted sometimes, you know, but um, the, the reality is when it comes to migratory bird hunting, um, you know, in the Americas, historically Maryland's like the birthplace of yeah. <laughs> that fly. Yeah. You know, we, we start on the East coast. The East coast is older than the rest of the, you know, as far yeah. as it being settled, um, yeah. you know, so yeah, we're we're excited about the the game dinner and and what you guys are are up to. Are are you are you guys looking at any other um, a, any other future projects or? So usually uh, sometime in April we go back with this Y Head Club. I have to connect with them uh, when we teach the kids and stuff because the the person that used to run it, uh, their kids kind of aged out of it and and just like a lot of things, they just they just don't do it anymore. So I have to connect with that, um, do that again. Um, outside the breakfast, no, we do the pheasant hunt that I mentioned earlier. We do that every year um, in late October. We do that. Um, but other than that, we just kind of, you know, we get invited places. We hang out. Um, you guys are like in the circle now. So a lot of times we'll, uh, outside we'll cross pollinate a little bit. Yeah. You know, outside of the, uh, the, the actual club meetings and stuff, we'll get together at certain people's houses and, Bring the wives and kids, and we'll do like taco nights on a yeah. Saturday. Everybody brings that, and we just sit around a fire and, and laugh and, 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 and do that, you know. But uh, no, I don't really have a whole lot planned for this year. Um, well, the year's still young, and yeah. uh, you know, it's it's community. That's that's the most important thing. It's, it's yeah. community. Yeah. So, um, well, listen. How can people uh, how can people follow you? Why don't you? Uh, I'll certainly can put it. Uh, when, I, when we post this, we'll make sure that we get your information out there. But you can find us on uh, Instagram at, at 3B Outdoors Club with at Outdoors Club uh, on uh, Instagram, Facebook. It's just 3B Outdoor Club. We're on Camo Space. That's how I met you guys. Uh, yeah. Now. Uh, it's a pretty cool thing. I'm kind of getting acclimated to it. Um, it's a pretty cool page, though. Um, and people can message me. If you guys want free stickers, message me. I'll send them to you guys. Um, you shoot me an email or message on there. Um, but yeah, that's what we're looking for, man. Reach out, give us a shout. 
uh, send me a picture of my stickers on your toolbox or your, your truck or your fishing box or whatever. And I'll send them to you, you know, so. Awesome. But, yeah. well, three B outdoors, uh, hashtag get outdoors. Yeah. That's the message. Yeah. Um, Chris, it's been, it's been a blast, man. I really appreciate you taking the yeah. time out of your evening. Like we said, it when we started, you know, we all work for a living. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're sort of just making time to connect here, but, yeah. um, I appreciate you uh, carving a little bit of time out and, yeah. uh, you know, sharing your passion with us and, and your story a little bit. Uh, yeah. And uh, my, my, I'm going to purpose on our end to, to remain connected and, um, you know, see, see what we can do to, to tie in with you guys a little bit. Awesome. Man. I look forward to it. Thanks for having me. Man. I really appreciate it. All right. Um, anything uh, lasting words for you from you, Hollywood? No, it was just good to just kind of sit here, uh, you guys are the, the next generation, I guess. I don't know, not next generation, but the prior generation. Well, you're yeah. not up there with the old parts. With my uh, line yeah. of work, I got told you're not you're not old until you're 80. So you guys are doing pretty good so far. But just yeah. to sit here and just realize how similar you guys are and, and you know, like minded and you know how many other people are out there are, are the same way too. But you know, we just don't take the time to converse and just connect. So yeah. it's just awesome to have the opportunity to sit here with Chris and, and just shoot the breeze a little bit and, and you know. We'll be hanging out here before long. I know my calendar's marked for, for April. Okay. Yeah. Now listen, when you guys show up, I want a cool nickname. Think of that. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're going to work on that. You know, everybody asks us, where do we get our handles at? And, uh, okay. you know, we'll, we'll have to get into that. But it goes back to the walkie-talkie days. You didn't want right. to say uh, your real name on the walkie-talkie because okay. you didn't know who was listening, right, <laughs> what, right, who right, else right. was on that channel. But uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll come up with a cool uh, cool nickname for you, Chris. That's uh, it's it, everybody gets an Indian name, you know, oh, when man. you run with our tribe. So, oh, man. Oh, man. so yeah. all right. Well, listen, uh, appreciate you for coming on. Uh, we'll sure. uh, we'll get everything uh, edited here and posted up uh, sometime real soon, and I'll, I'll send you all the links. But um, for uh, you listeners out there, appreciate you watching and uh, tuning in to Tracks and Tackle. You can find us. Uh, anywhere you get your podcast you can find us on youtube you can uh, get us on instagram and uh yeah you can uh, also uh, follow us on camo space so uh, appreciate you tuning in we want you guys to always remember stay wild <laughs>